Dad, which little contraption you made over here? Not not the scissors, this little contraption. Well, I can work member up so you ain't gotta be working around on the floor while we're around like pigs. Like a pig? Like a pig. What's the pig sound like? I didn't say sounding like a pig, I said wallowing around like a pig. Well, what pig like. It's hard to get one of these things just mounting the vice, square, there ain't a fucking square edge on him anywhere on it. So, build you a little bracket, put it on your engine stand that's just sitting over in the corner doing nothing anyway. Okay. Dad just took those caps off, and one important thing to remember is always mark which cap goes where. And the adjuster needs to stay with the cap. Yes, you do not want to go mixing shit up. Because one's left hand and one's right hand. Dad's got everything out of it internally, and hopefully if that camera's doing its job, you'll be able to see all that, so I ain't gonna sit here and film all of it. There's the old pinion gear. I don't know where Dad put the old ring gear. Where'd you put it, Dad? Over there. Over there? Oh, there we go. We'll get that. We'll get all that taken apart. So that way the satellite no longer has a spool and I can drive it places. So cool. Yeah, there's the new ring and pin. A lot smaller, but it's 323. That's what we like. Drivability. If you got plenty of horsepower, you don't need low gears. Ain't that right, Dad? That's right. My golly. What gear do we put in the back of your 68 Charger? Oh, four, fifty-five, twenty-three, hut, hut. Wow. <laughs> I'm guessing you're going to say we also put a small block Chevy in your 68 Charger as now well. You, now, you, now you're just being silly. Now I'm being silly. Um, you put I, a 323 in the back of your 323, car. 323, so I just wanted to go down the highway without screaming. But you chose a 426 Hemi as a power plant. Don't need no big gears. You got plenty of horsepower. It is true. Your take on it, Michael? I agree with it. It ain't about spinning your tires. It's about having speed on the other end of the track. Very good point. Top end is all that matters. Yep. Not the bottom end. What are you doing with the torch, Dan? I'm burning bearings off. <laughs> You want to explain that to the people who don't understand what you're doing? Well, you got to get down the inner race. So you get cut the outer race, okay? Let all the rollers fall out. And then all of a sudden you're down the inner cage. And then you can just heat it and knock it off. Yeah. I guess they make a thing called bearing splitter and this and that you can have. Use it once every five years. Or you can just cut it off like that. How long did that take you? About five seconds? <laughs> so you're saying that you know what you're doing. Uh, you get me a screwdriver and all of them mess up and you can pop it right off. Yep. Just do, Dad, because I've been busy. <laughs> I've been on the phone. Yeah. Press the new one on. Going off. 
put a new bearing on out at the inboard bearing of the pinion shaft and there'll be an outboard bearing up here. And uh, go to the races in the cases. Races in the cases. Races in the cases. Races in the case. I used the stock shims that I left the stock shims in because that's generally related to the case. Look at them nice new pretty guys. Looks pretty. What are you doing now, Dad? Well, I get finished up. I won't make you explain to people why we had to stop filming for a while. On what part may have got accidentally installed. Not saying that ring gear uh, pinion got installed instead of the actual correct one. Not going to say anything like that. So, kind of maybe lost track and shit. What are you setting right now, Dad? It's like you turn that little cog deal, that little gear. That's the, that's the uh, bearing side, just side, uh, get your clearance out of your carrier bearings here. These are carrier bearings. Mm-hmm. And you set your clearance, and you also set your root depth of your pinion into your double gear. Let's check that with some of that yellow paint. So what you're saying is that's a pretty important deal. Yeah. These, when turning these, can move this piece sideways and it moves it away from the pinion gear. So all of a sudden you're you're not fully engaging the tooth, and you need to have that up there to where you got like you know fifteen thousands clearance for ten to fifteen, just a little bit of slop, just a little bit of play. Just you got that set up. Yeah, I'm going to say that's pretty well set up. I'm going to take these out one at a time and put Loctite on them. Of course, now we got we need to check the wear pattern. Probably ought to do that. I, I can't hardly do that until I get everything tightened down. We'll get everything tightened down? How important would you say Loctite is, Dad? Well, yeah, it's pretty important. You don't see any lock washers or lock tabs or any way of keeping these bolts from backing out. We are not sponsored by Permatex, but... Use the blue Loctite, not the red Loctite. Nope. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. Red Loctite, you need heat to get it loose. <laughs> well, all you do is you take a little dibby dab. Dibby dab. You want more on there? It's a little bit shy of the dibby there. Whoa, yeah. wow. Yeah. Well, I got a little loose, okay? I'm holding the camera with one hand and lock <laughs> Yep. Probably got some sort of a torque spec. But we got a built in torque spec. We're Scott folk. Say that. Tell us how you check your torque rating on these dead. Just set everything in place. All right, so. That sounds about right. Where's your paint? Yeah, I had that little. You're just bitching about something, Dad. What are you bitching about? I got this little plastic thing of yellow paint. Uh huh. And somehow it has been hermetically sealed to the bottom of this little box. So I'm envisioning a lot of yellow paint going everywhere. It's not really paint, it's grease. Well. It's gonna get, because I tried painting a bunch of shit with it and it didn't work. How the heck you Why don't we just put some white grease inside here and check the wear pattern? That's what we did it before. Alright, let's do that. I'm right. trying to get all fancy and shit. Okay. So Dad's packing in the grease in just one, two. And he's gonna rotate that around and that's gonna show us our wear pattern. We'll know if we have to adjust anymore. Now Dad's hat's getting in the way. Looks like we got a good wear pattern. See, and you got you got grease there at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, it did, it ain't it didn't clean the bottom of it. So that means it's not too tight. If that would have been completely blowed out of there like that. 
and they wouldn't be good. Too tight. You gotta have room for that oil. That oil is the lifeblood. See how that's got grease in the. Mm hmm. And you see how it's. It's all along the sides. It covers it completely, so that's a good pattern to have. Very good. Mm hmm. That's what you want. Setting up a rear end ain't hard. Just common sense, basically. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this really boring-ass video.